Let's go back to the beginning, Robin, and, and find out. I mean, Cotswold Explorer, it's self-explanatory, the name, but I, I know it's yourself and your cameraman, Ross, and your, your producer. And how did it all start, Robin? Where did it go? But take us back to the beginning. Well, it, it was really an, an extraordinary piece of good fortune. I was doing a, uh, an hour-long uh, food and drink show for a local TV channel called That's TV. And Ross was one of my producers there. Um, the series came to a sort of natural end. And I, it was on my last day there when I was approached by Ross. And he simply said, um, why don't we think about doing something on YouTube? And the truth is, if I'm honest, I didn't really know what he was talking about at the time. Right. Um, and it, but it was flattering, you know. This is a young man. He was, I don't know, in his early 20s or something, um, uh, talking to an old fellow at me and suggesting that we work together on a new project. And so, not surprisingly, I said yes. Now, we were going to do a series of uh, things very much like I'd been doing for the television before, which was food and drink stuff. I'm, I was a wine merchant uh, when I was working right. all those years and um, but we then had a little think and thought that maybe uh, it would be more fun to do something more travel orientated and the Cotswolds of course came to mind it's been part of my life for all my life really the Cotswolds and, mm. um, and that's where it all began uh, so yes, I mean, I was just very, in a very flattering way, I was in, invited to do it, and uh, I have simply never regretted it for a second. And is it now something you do? I mean, I know, I mean, we we were neighbours in Bampton. I mean, neighbours across twenty yards across the other side of the street, neighbours. And uh, I used to come and visit and see Pip in her studio and so on. But is this something you do? more or less full-time now yes i mean as far as anything is full-time these days uh, yeah. it is it is the thing that um certainly engrosses me more than anything else i do i do one or two other things as well but i but this is certainly a, a thing that we found to be so enjoyable adam to be honest it's it much more than i expected it it, it started as a, as a almost a kind of a hobby thing really but it, it has grown we've got loads of people following us from all around the world we've discovered the extraordinary power of the of the social media world and so yes yeah, some of the conversations i'm now having about the cotswolds uh, are worldwide and therefore yes it does take up most of my time I well i think it's delightful and i'm just going to read out for the listeners a few random comments that i've picked from the youtube we'll come on to how you can access your 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 videos and things later but yeah. um i just happened to look i was looking at um robin i was watching the series five which i think you managed to squeeze in in between lockdowns um yeah was it june july time something like that and i just picked one and, and looked it was brilliant of course um <laughs> but there were some lovely comments and i'll just take three literally at random and it i think gets you an idea of your sort of global appeal here one of them says as lovely as my state of pennsylvania is my heart yearns to be there i shed tears when i watch your explorations of the stunning villages of the cotswolds as i know i will never see them firsthand in my lifetime that's rather poignant it's so touching isn't it? this is as close as i will ever be to my heart's desire thank you sir for sharing these amazing videos and that's somebody from a lady from Pennsylvania. And then uh, then somebody else here, which I think is rather nice, says, Robin, sir, have you been knighted recently, Robin? What's this? <laughs> Robin, sir, it was a very awesome part of England and was very shocked by the beauty of Cotswolds. I will visit one day. Yeah. And I think that was a gentleman from Japan, I believe. And then this one, this is such a fascinating series on my favourite part of England. Thanks for all your research and exciting narrative, Robin. You bring the region into many houses across the world. Great work. Yeah. I mean, I th it must be incredibly satisfying, not just to bring the stories of these places to life for people like me who live here, but, but to have people write in from Pennsylvania. I mean, what a pleasure for you. It is absolutely extraordinary and, and, and completely unexpected, if I'm honest. It, it's also something of a responsibility, to be, to be honest, as well, mm. because, you know, it, you, it's all very fine. We, we put our head above the parapet a little bit in this, doing this kind of thing, and you're, it's slightly nerve-wracking and so on. But when you get kind of embraced in the way uh, we have at the Cotswold Explorer, um, it becomes a very important to, to take it seriously, which, of course, we do, and um, it, it's enormous fun. Of course, it's satisfying. Yes, it, it panders to the 
ego of a show off like me, and it's <laughs> it's um, and it's great. But well, you uh, have we've a got a tremendous some, screen presence and and a very I don't know is it mellifluous voice? I don't know what the word is. Yes, you, I don't you, know. I have no idea where the voice comes from. But well, uh, you, that, I'm that going to ask you to read a, a bit of one of your favourite <laughs> books out later on, so she hears some more of that voice. So now oh, yeah. um, the early part of the series, at least, I think, was inspired or rather. It was it was guided by this gentleman Herbert Evans, who his book I believe is is a bit of a, a go to tome for you. Is that right? It absolutely is. Well, this is a rather neat coincidence because my son gave me this book um, just coincidentally about two years before we started this whole thing, and while I was going through the, I have a, a library in my house full of books, which uh, I was looking for any references to the Gospels. I came across it again, and it was so perfect for us. This book. It's written at the sort of turn of the 20th century and it's um it's a brilliant description of the high what's called the highways and byways of oxford and the cotswolds and we decided to follow it um it quite loosely because of course the world isn't quite the same as it was but it gives us this rather wonderful opportunity to take the great image that people have of the cotswolds the wonderful picture of beauty and peace and and, and silence and stuff um, and it sort of superimposed the modern world on top of it. Yes. And it's and it's yeah. been a fantastically useful book to follow, I have to say. And Herbert himself went everywhere on his bicycle, didn't he? He did, yes. I mean, he, th- those are the days, weren't they? My goodness. They were. He was, he was a youngish chap, but he, yes, he cycled all the way through. It means that he didn't cover the entire area, of course, and, and he, neither he nor we are, are ever professing to be a sort of comprehensive... Uh, guide to the to the Cotswolds because it's huge and and mm. even its boundaries are disputed. You know, I mean, the, the truth is we're very much planning on heading even further south, almost as far as Bath, as, as soon as yeah. we're allowed out. Yeah. And the the purists will tell us that that does nothing whatever to do with the Cotswolds, but of course, it does because it's very similar in its structure and mm. um, and style. It's quite. A, you're right when you mentioned about how you have a responsibility, and I think that um, you know, in your case, it started off as a as a, I might say, an, an agreeable hobby, and then you, you know, mm. obviously teamed up with um, with Ross and and Vivian Clark, who's your p- producer and marketing she's she's guru. Um, invaluable because she's she's the person who really understands uh, the, what this thing has turned into. Mm. You know, this is it's become a business which uh, now has potential. We you know we haven't started doing anything particularly fancy with it yet, but but it is it is a, an interesting yeah. thing that she's yeah. But I mean, the thing is, it's yeah. I mean, it, there is a responsibility because once you have gained, as you have, a, a, a an army of loyal followers, you know, they they mm. they're always waiting for the next thing to come along. And I mean, obviously, yeah. lockdown notwithstanding. But you know, there's always ways, and you know, people are concerned that you might be going down to Bath and so on. It doesn't really matter because once you've got the format and and someone like I mean, someone with the technical capability of of that Ross has I mean the uh, listeners these are stunning video shots and um, Ross has started recently using a drone and the most amazing aerial views and of the slad valley I mean it's beautiful and obviously mm. Vivian is there to, to put it all together and to turn it into a digital content that people can access easily and people that's get exactly hooked right. on these things Robin that's the point and and I'm sure they'll be yeah. waiting for the next one so that brings me on to the 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 lockdown now obviously you went around in series five which was great and um you went as far as slad and talked about laurie lee and all that kind of thing but i mean presumably lockdown was i mean i was your neighbor so i knew that you know christmas you just sent out a sort of christmas message effectively to your to your followers and, and then managed to squeeze in one one series in between lockdowns but now of course we're you know back back into it again as we speak and what are your plans for have you done series six yet or episode six are you managing we released series six yes episode six um about three days ago two days ago oh right oh this is very timely uh, isn't it yeah you want the (laughs) it's perfect timing we're actually quite pleased with it it's it's always a little risky because the amount of uh, filming we were able to do was fairly limited, as you can imagine. Yes. But I'm very, I'm quite pleased with with episode six. Yes. So we have released episode six, but where and now we're frankly uh, locked away. There's nothing I can do mm-hmm. for several, a couple of months now. Yeah. Um, but so what I've turned to is what I intermittently turned to during the course of last year, which is doing some reading aloud, and I I had a wonderful time over Christmas because. I recorded a Christmas Carol, which 
I I really enjoyed doing. I have to admit, um, fantastic. This, this is a thing that I've been I've been reading aloud all my life. It was I was taught how to and what it entailed and stuff when I was extremely young, and um, and I I love doing it. So that has been enormous fun. I must admit. Excellent. Now, okay, series six then is um, well. I see. I keep saying series. Episode six is Stroud, Siren, Sester, Mitch, and Hampton, Marnsbury. Is That's that, it. Is that right? And and it ends in Tetbury, yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay, it ends in Tetbury. So that will, well, yeah. released two or three days ago, which is great. And can people go on to the YouTube now and... They um, absolutely can. If they go onto YouTube and published. look at Cotswold Explorer, it's published, absolutely. Oh, congratulations yeah. on yeah. that. It's been yeah. a tough old year. Now, going back yeah. to your reading, um, mm. I would like to hear you read something, as many other oh, people right. would do. So I believe that, Robin, you've chosen something you're going to read for us and then after that we'll go into a song which I'll introduce and then we'll carry on chatting after the song. So what have you got to read for us, Robin? Well, I've got, uh, there's a wonderful other book. I, you know, the, the thing about Evans is that he wrote this book at a time when the Cotswolds was this extremely remote and rather wild rom- romantic place. And that's why we used him as the background for our tour. So that, as I said earlier on, we can do this sort of superimposition. Yeah. There's another book written at a little bit earlier than him, not much, but a little bit, uh, called A Cotswold Village. And it's written by a man called J. Arthur Gibbs. And I think it is one of the most amazing descriptions of the Cotswolds that used to be. And the reason I think this is interesting, really, is that it is the image of the Cotswolds that people still have, Mm. despite the fact that actually, of course, they're very different from this. Uh, Anyway, that's what it is. It's a a book called A Cotswold Village, um, and it's written by J. Arthur Gibbs, who died young, uh, and this was written in the late 19th century. So if you'd like me to read a bit of that. Robin, we would love you to. If you care to start any time you wish, that would be a pleasure. It's called A Cotswold Village by J. Arthur Gibbs. The village is not a hundred miles from London, yet far from the madding crowd's ignoble strife. A green, well-wooded valley in the midst of those far-stretching, cold-looking Cotswold hills, it's like an oasis in a desert. Up above on the wolds, all is bleak, dull and uninteresting. The air up there is ever chill, Walls of loose stone divide field from field, and few houses are to be seen. But down in the valley, all is fertile and full of life. It is here that the old-fashioned villagers dwell. How well I remember the first time I came upon it. One fine September evening, having left all traces of railways and the ancient Roman town of Sarancester, some seven long miles behind me, With wearied limbs, I sought this quiet, sequestered spot. Suddenly, as I was wondering how amid these never-ending hills there could be such a place as I had been told existed, I beheld it at my feet, surpassing beautiful. Below me was a small village nestling amid a wealth of stately trees. The hand of man seemed in some bygone time to have done all that was necessary to render the place habitable, but no more. There were cottages, bridges and farm buildings, but all were ivy-clad and time-worn. The very trees themselves appeared to be laden with a mantle of ivy that was more than they could bear. Many a tall fir from base to topmost twig was completely robed with the smooth, five-pointed leaves of this rapacious evergreen. Through the thick foliage of elm, ash and beech, I could just see an old manor house, and round about it, as if for protection, were clustered some thirty cottages. Is that enough for the moment? That's perfect, Robin, yeah. yeah. That's great. Isn't that rather a wonderful description? It was. It's sort of what we kind of expect the Cotswolds to be like. Yeah, it's interesting that because it's, um, you know, as I mentioned, I think in the context of your episode five, places have, like everywhere else, you know, places have moved on. But there are places in the Cotswolds. I mean, you think of Slad in particular. We talked about Slad in the, you know, with Laurie Lee. But I mean, there is a place that I imagine really, I mean, it has not changed at all. It barely has. It is extraordinary. And what's more, it hasn't been... 
you know, the, the, there is Laurie Lee's house, mm. and when I last visited, it's still in a state of considerable disrepair. Yeah. You know, there's something rather wonderful about this very famous house that he would, he made so yeah. incredibly famous, not having been dolled up into some yes attraction a visitor um, center and and exactly. of course you know as you mentioned in the in in the in the video you know the developers are literally creeping up the valley towards them and they're all you know yeah. trying to band together to keep them out and so on so i mean it's yeah. must be quite as you mentioned before earlier on in the chat you know it's it's very tempting to present all these places as sort of somehow preserved in a sort of aspect of nostalgia but at the same time it's also your responsibility to to to, to show them in the light of what's happening now you know we can't absolutely all, we can't all just pretend that nothing happened in the last 200 years so you know these places have a modern a modern relevance um, they do indeed and i think that's absolutely critical it they have a, a play an enormous place in our uh, society as as things are at the moment and it actually um, I, it's that rather strange um, business of the of the two things in people's minds. Those people who go to the Cotswolds to to see it, they look for signs of that ancient vision that uh, Evans and Gibbs mm -hmm. had, um, but they also expect, whilst being looked after in the Cotswolds, very modern facilities so you know they want really good modern hotels yeah. they want restaurants that are extremely good and so forth so the business for the for the Cotswolds is to try to save enough of that 19th century vision um, to, to satisfy the, the wandering tourists from abroad mm. but also to give them part of the modern world which they like and, it, and that's in a way what I have to do. So going back to the Cotswold Explorer, you and Widget will be wandering around, but you don't know when and where at the moment. It's all up in the air, isn't it? Yes, I think we know where because I think we've, we, one of the things that this thing has done for us is to give us time to plan, which, right. frankly, I think it probably shows a bit in the early parts of our <laughs> series. We weren't planning much. We were just having an enormous lot of fun going wherever it is our um, transport took us mm. uh, but we are we're planning rather more carefully these days and we will be going further south I'm going to talk a little about Stonehenge and we're going to go on and down as far as Bath and we'll probably take in Salisbury on the way you know I mean it, these are these are, are going to be wonderful times but you're you're right of course we can't do any of that at the moment we I mean at all and yeah. when that's going to of course happen heaven alone knows we'll we'll just be patient and wait because it clearly will happen in the end I'm, I'm um, sure, I'm sure it will. we'll be able to get out yeah i mean it must be very it, it, it look it is frustrating but at the end yeah, of the yeah, day we have to we you know it, we all know it it's for the re in fact as we speak now you know the beginning of the new year um mm. it's it's just not not looking good at all but there we are what can we say let's talk briefly about pip um i mentioned in the beginning that um mrs robin chakra pip is a superb artist and um out of her studio in Brampton she produces the most wonderful paintings and um yeah. Robin she's I mean I, you know she does a lot of local stuff around Bampton obviously and, and in the area but she also has has um when well, I, I mentioned international but one of the things that she's done is is done a lot of work with or uh, for the um producers of Downton Abbey tell us a bit about that well, she did. She did it for us mainly, rather rather than for the producers. But yes, she did. What what happened was that she was many years ago actually commissioned by Blenheim Palace to paint some pictures of the of the building. She did she did three, I think, or possibly four, I think, seasonal great paintings of Blenheim Palace. Uh, this was probably fifteen or twenty years ago, and she and having done them, she then started painting stately homes, and mm -hmm. she was commissioned to paint all kinds of houses all over the country. Um, and then when Downton came along, it was a sort of obvious thing for her to do uh, to create some Downton images, which she did in order to, I have to admit, to help me, uh, because I was involved in the business of trying to raise money to restore the old 17th century uh, old grammar school in Downton, yep. which was used as the cottage hospital in the filming of Downton Abbey. Mm -hmm. And she painted these four images of for us. Uh, they turned into six in the end. And the, it was, a, I mean, it was an incredibly generous thing for her to do, to be honest, because she's a hard-working artist. She's one of those artists who really does get up in the morning and go to her studio and spend her time working. 
and to give what must have been a nigh on seven or eight months of her life to doing these paintings for yeah. us was very decent of her. And we turned the images into all kinds of uh, bits of memorabilia for mm. uh, for sale here. We raised loads of money for them. But it made her, uh, you know, well-known yeah. worldwide because Downton being what it is, is yeah. Uh, yeah. has taken her name everywhere. Well, that's, um, that's tremendous. Yeah. It, it has been fantastic. It has and, been fantastic. Uh, Seems a long time ago now. But well, I mean, on, on the side note, I mean, for Downton, you know, how can we, one buy Pip's um, uh, prints and and things? It's it, it it's not that brilliantly easy at the moment, but right. uh, but it, as it happens, uh, we are yes, I mean, we're, we are in the process of of read because we're now restoring the building, the money for which we've been has been raised now, thanks partly to Pip, but also to a whole load of other hard-working people. Um, the shop in which all those things uh, were available is now closed yes, yeah. uh, for the rest for the rest restoration of the building. It will reopen we, we, as soon as we are able. Um, we are fully expecting it to be completed by Easter, and that sounds to me as the sort of time when it might be possible for us all to get out of our houses and go and do things again. Oh, and fantastic. if that's the case, the coincidence is rather neat. And so that will be the place to go to get okay. her stuff off. Um, Excellent. Well, I mean, I've seen her. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen. We did a profile of Pip in our, you know, in the Bampton Lowdown. You may remember, and it was yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, it was lovely paintings. Um, she now, is brilliant. She going is brilliant. back onto the onto the you know contacts and so on. Let, let's just sort of head towards the end. And how, how does one? I mean, you are obviously you have your own website. Um, we do. It's called the Cotswold Explorer UK. Right. Mm. Okay. And you also fully up on social media. We are. You can find us on almost everything. If you look at the Cotswold, look for the Cotswold Explorer. You'll find us on on them all. Uh, these um, these are uh, enormous fun. It's it's frankly a good deal of it is above my head, <laughs> uh, but we are. But we're certainly there. And you're on, the, of course, you're on the gram. It, the gram. Yes. Yeah. Well yeah. Yeah. And and in the end, uh, it's of course YouTube that is our home, and uh, we the Cotswold Explorer is again what you look for. And there you'll find us um, with all our 91 odd films, mm. and uh, and and join. I hope as many of the people as possible is always welcome. Uh, the but I think we have twelve and a half thousand followers at the moment, and it's growing very fast, which well, is great. Uh, you are to be congratulated. It's amazing that what started off by your own admission is just sort of wobbling around agreeable places with a with a, a young enthusiastic cameraman if i may say has now Absolutely. turned into a into a into an industry i mean 91 episodes yeah. and more to follow and you're branching out into other parts of the area i won't say other parts of the country but other parts of the area so hopefully Absolutely. once all this ghastly business is over robin we'll be able to see a lot more of you and and I've seen your, you know, the episodes I've seen, absolutely wonderful. You're a great presenter. Well, and you are extremely kind to say so, Adam. It's, it's been, it's been a, this is a, a thing that I never knew I was able to do, but it has been enormous fun, I have to admit. Well, congratulations. And so, Robin Shukra, thank you so much for joining me on Chit Chat. And folks, the Cotswold Explorer, please do go onto YouTube and just dip in and out and have a look at a few, because Robin's a great presenter, but the main thing is he's got wonderful material and what a great natural joys he's got to talk about and the way he does it is absolutely brilliant so robin thank you so much you're very welcome